Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I'm really sorry that this part got delayed by two days, just been a little busy um, with a few other projects, but we're continuing from where we left off. And so we're on the final case in the game. It seems that um, a Case 9 actually goes into Case 10, so they're actually one together. So Adventure 9 and Adventure um, uh, 10 are the same one of Barrack being accused. So final, the resolve of Ryanosuke Naruhodo, Trial Part 1. Let's do this. So this is the craziest case so far in the game. Final chapter, oh man. The resolve of Ryanosuke Naruhodo. Notice how that, that, the final case had no intro. Notice that. Like every single other one had an intro, this one didn't. Defendant's antechamber. So I feel that we're gonna find out a lot of stuff today. So, the time's finally come. Today, oh, we unravel everything. I'll be counting on your support more than ever today, Miss Suzato. What's wrong with her? Um, Miss Suzato? Ah! What, what was that? <laughs> oh no. Uh, what's, what's the matter, Mr. Naruhoto? Um, nothing. I was just saying that I'll be relying on your support today, but... I'm so sorry, of course. I, I I know I can be rather incompetent at times, but... I shan't let you down. Would you mind helping me to my feet, then? Oh dear, I'm r really very sorry. <laughs> Suzato-san isn't her usual self at all. But that's hardly surprising, I suppose. She just found out that her father is the partner of the world-famous detective, not to mention... Ah, good morning, sir. Lord Van Zeeks. Thank you for all your efforts yesterday. Whoa, did I hear that correctly? What? Oh, um, no, nothing. Just, I hope we can clear things up today. You never hear- you never see him smile one time, um, but he's now he's being grateful. I really can't make this man out. His face says I hate you, but his words are almost jovial today. <laughs> In fact, he hasn't been very Reaper-like at all since this all began yesterday. Lord Van Zeeks isn't the Reaper, Mr. Naruhodo. Good point. The Reaper, I suppose in hindsight. I shouldn't have allowed that misconception to go unchallenged. Huh? It was my tacit acceptance of that pseudonym. And my failure to stop the Reaper becoming something more than a mere legend that led to all this. But you're not to blame for that, Lord Van Zeeks. It's only because serious crime in the capital dropped off so sharply when the public started calling you that. That's why you didn't say anything, isn't it? To be frank, I'm not sure that was the sole reason. What do you mean? There was a rumor at the time that the Reaper was really the ghost of my late brother. That having been slain by that evil killer, Clint's restless spirit returned as some sort of demigod to wield a deadly blade of justice where I, by dint of the law, could not. Yes, we've heard that story too. When I lost him, I felt as though I'd lost my guiding light. I didn't know where to go or what to do. And so, in some small way, I wonder if perhaps those rumors made me feel absence a little less uh, keenly. Even if I knew it was just an illusion, just some nonsense conjured up by an over-imaginative public. He was obviously extremely important to you. Lord Clint Van Zeeks. Well, what's important now is uncovering the truth. That's all that matters. I, I know that you didn't take anyone's life. And I intend to prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt in court today. I never thought I'd say this. But I can see it in your eyes. That burning desire to cut through all the lies and deception. I can't deny it any longer. You are a lawyer of absolute integrity. Thank you. That was nice of him. 
Now tell me, why do I detect the scent of expensive tea leaves in the air? Oh, it's Iris. Oh, I, wow, he just said what I said. Um, where, when did you get here? Oh. Ah, um... I brought you one of my special blends. Hurley loves it. He says it helps him to clear his head. I thank you. Oh. Heh <laughs> heh. That's surely the first and last time we'll ever see a sight like this. You seem different today, Iris. Oh? Sort of. Subdued, I suppose. I am not. What happened yesterday is obviously still playing on her mind a lot. She's clearly very troubled about having stolen that autopsy report from Dr. Sife's laboratory. Alright then. Good luck to you both. I have to make a move now. Oh, you're not staying? I thought you'd want to watch today's proceedings. Well, I'd like to cheer you on, obviously. But I've got lots to get ready. Get ready? For what? Oh yes. Would you take this? Isn't that one of those little felt dolls that usually dang from your knapsack? Yes, it's a lucky charm. A little, um, hurley that I made once. A hurley? It looks more like a har- Harley to me. If for some reason you completely run out of options in this trial today, then just pull this little Hurley's ears as hard as you possibly can. What? Pull his ears? That's right. It's a way to bring good luck. I think you might need it. A little doll Mr. Sholmes in hair form been told to tug its ears if I run out of options in the trial today. You, you think what well we'll need is luck? I just sneaked a peek inside the courtroom, and it seems very different to normal. Yes, it would seem that a certain someone has decided to pull out all the stops. What does that mean? What about Mr. Sholmes, Iris? I don't know. He was out all night and he hadn't come home by the time I left this morning. Oh, I see. Was Professor Mikotoba out all night too, do you think, Miss Suzato? Yes, it would seem so. I telegrammed the hotel this morning. And apparently, they didn't come back to their rooms last night at all. They, Father and Judge Jigoku, I mean. Judge Jigoku too. That's right, nobody appears to have seen either of them since yesterday. I wonder what's going on here. Counsel for the Defense of the Defendant. Court is about to be in session. Please make your way inside the courtroom at once. Good luck then, Runo. Good luck, Susie. Yes, thanks, Iris. And you, Mr. Reaper, I hope it goes well. Once again, I thank you for the delicious tea. It was very soothing. Oh, I'm so glad. We must go inside now. Lord Van Zeeks. Hmm. Let's see how this ends, then. I wonder if we're gonna get to the ending today, or it's gonna be some, uh, cut off here. Lord Van Zeeks has always been the formidable prosecutor I've had to lock horns with in court, but not today. Today, I battle with another in pursuit of the truth. My best friend, Kazuma Soji, who I trust more than anyone else in the world. Now I understand what it was that drew me here to Britain all those months ago. Now I know exactly what destiny had in store for me. It's all been leading up to this one day to this one trial, to this one final reckoning. Third November, 9.30 a.m. The Old Bailey. Courtroom. Where's the judge? It feels even more oppressive here than it did yesterday. There are cold stares piercing me like knives from all sides today. Ah. M Mr. Naruhoto, look. What? L Lord Strongheart is the judge? What? You gotta be kidding me. No, he can't be the judge here. This, this, um, uh... Oh, man. He, he's involved in this case. He is. I feel it. I feel it in my gut that he has something to do with this case. 
Oh man, he's gonna he's gonna try to rig the he's gonna try to rig the trial to make Lord Van Zeeks guilty. This is this is not good. This is not good at all. He has something to do with this, I feel like. Kazuma must have known beforehand. The ramifications of this trial now extend far beyond the murder of one Scotland Yard inspector. In fact, events have come to light that threaten to rock the very foundations of our country's legal system. The escape of a condemned criminal on the night of his execution, the subsequent unlawful shooting of the man, and the revelation that prison staff must have been complicit in the jailbreak. Britain is currently hosting influential members of the judiciary from countries all around the world. It is imperative that we uncover the truth in these proceedings to avoid international embarrassment. By royal decree, this will continue to be a closed trial. And one, uh, uh, over which I, Mael Strongheart, exercise total and unequivocal authority. Not good. No jurors either. The, the six jurors flames just... As was the case yesterday's proceedings, those here present in the public gallery are distinguished members of our judiciary, assembled to bear witness to a fair judicial process. In other words, a collection of your acolytes, Lord Strongheart. On a personal note, I find this most distressing, Lord Van Zeeks. You were a prosecutor of exceptional talent. Much like your brother, Clint, in fact. Damn, look at that gavel. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. You can't just swap out a judge like that. You can't do that, especially when the trial's been going on for a few days. It's violating the rights of the defendant. For the trial of Derek Van Zeeks, who officially stands accused of murder. Counsels for the prosecution and defense, are you in full readiness to proceed? The defense is ready, my lord. As is the prosecution. Yesterday's proceedings brought to light a shocking and disturbing fact. There was a side to the victim, Inspector Tobias Gregson, that was unknown to his superiors at Scotland Yard. Yes, he was carrying out um, operations in secret, which Scotland Yard knew nothing about. And in those clandestine operations, he had an accomplice, Mr. Daly Vigil, who would be given the inspector's identification and present himself around the capital in order to establish credible al alibis for Gregson. In that way, Gregson appeared to be carrying out his regular Scotland Yard work, when in fact he wasn't. At the end of yesterday's session, Mr. Vigil, who had been suffering from amnesia, regained his memory. It would appear he buried his memories at the time deep inside himself as a means of self-preservation, because whilst he was engaged as chief warder at Barclay Prison, he abetted the convict's escape. Mr. Vigil is currently recuperating at St. Sinners. He's recovered enough to give a signed statement about his movements on the day prior to the incident. He's formally admitted to posing as Gregson while investigating the red-headed leak. Which brings us to the crucial issue of the victim's time of death. The defense yesterday proposed a suggestion that the victim may have been killed one day earlier. This was based largely on the discovery that the victim's pocket watch had not been wound. But the thing is, remember, Lord Strongheart um, denied the, the coroner, didn't want the coroner to write a time of death, and he denied that the body could have been frozen. He says there's no, there's no place the body could have been frozen here. So, he is in on this. I feel it strongly that he has something to do with this case. The prosecution has something to report on that subject, my lord. Really? Go ahead, Prosecutor Asoji. I met once again with the coroner yesterday to discuss the issue. She confirmed that the defense's suggestion could not be ruled out. It's entirely possible that Inspector Gregson was killed on 31st of October, the day before his body was discovered. I have here an updated autopsy report that includes the amended details. But the official opinion of the investigation team was made clear yesterday, that the time of death was 5pm on 1st of November. There are indications of an attempt to disguise the real time of death, however. Notice how angry Strongheart is getting, you can see in his eyes. It seems that the natural decaying process of the victim's body may have been slowed by keeping it chilled. That's out of the question. See? You know, he's he's denying it. There are no refrigeration devices in that part of London large enough to accommodate a human corpse. My lord, this is more than just conjecture. There's evidence to support the idea. We must investigate it thoroughly. Very well. The court will accept the new report as evidence. 
However, if this updated report is deemed to be accurate, it would give renewed significance to the movements of the victim on the day before the Fresno Street incident. It would, yes. Especially since on that day, Inspector Gregson was using Mr. Visual to cover up his real movements. It's conceivable that he was killed in the course of his secret activities. Do I sense that the prosecution has some information regarding those activities? Scotland Yard put an enormous effort into investigating that precise matter yesterday. I think we should begin by presenting the results of that investigation work. So the prosecution calls its first witness now. Who's the first witness? Oh, Gina? State your name and occupation for the court. Inspector Gina Lestrade reporting. Uh, Repper sensitive of, sensitive of Scotland Yard. As a self-conferred uh, rank, but never mind. Gina, again. What's your problem, Otto? <laughs> What's with that Gina? Again? Look, eh? <laughs> ah. The boss meant the world to me. He done more for me than anyone else ever did. Well, don't you remember that we got you a not guilty verdict when you got accused of murder? Oh, Inspector Gregson, you mean. He got me out of the back slums of the East End and took me under his wing. Taught me that life can have pur a purpose. So that's why I'm the best person to be standing here, speaking for him. Oh, Gina. Right, all out of the goodness of Gregson's heart. Not at all that he had his arm twisted by Mr. Shones, no. What's relevant to these proceedings is that the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigation yesterday has revealed that the victim was carrying out some assignment the police knew nothing about. Very troubling. That face. Lord Strongheart knew. So, Inspector Lestrade, let's hear exactly what it says in that report. Coming right up, sir. This can go either really good or really bad. Witness testimony. The victim's movements. All yard detectives are supposed to follow orders and investigate what they are told. But a little search of the boss's office turned up a notebook that had a lot of secret meetings in it. According to that, the boss was looking into some smuggled goods dealings that day. Looks like it was a big job and all, but the coppers weren't onto it yet. What matters most is, there's witnesses what saw the Reaper at the place too. Smuggled goods. I don't know, do I? I'm just telling you what's written in the book. Tobacco, tea, spices, medicines. Goods of all sorts flow into London by illegal channels from across the globe. It's well known that they're disposed of at irregular black markets that take place in the capital. But the police are rarely able to locate them in time. So Inspector Gregson was investigating one of those black markets. It's been suggested that high-ranking government officials may be involved in black market activity. No doubt Gregson was trying to avoid details of his investigation being leaked to the involved parties. That would explain why he was operating on his own authority without the Yard's knowledge. And do we know where the dealings were taking place this time? In a particular room of a certain exclusive London Gentleman's Club. And on the day in question, the accused is known to have been there. That's the conclusion of Scotland Yard's investigation into the matter. That that can't be. We haven't heard anything about any of this. Members of the club have testified to it. There's no question, the accused, Beric Van Zeeks, was present. That would be very significant testimony then. Who's accusing him of this? Oh my, but, but. Lord Van Zeeks made no mention of this at all. In short, Lord Van Zeeks had ample opportunity to murder the victim. Very well then, counsel for the defense, begin your cross-examination. Here we go. The victim's movements. All yard detectives are supposed to follow orders and investigate what they're told. Hold it! So, you followed orders, do you, Gina? Nah, not me. I'm above all that, see? Oh? The boss always adds special orders for me. 
grab us some fish and chips, or go and give Toby his grub. That kind of thing. So, errands more than orders, then. This detective is still an apprentice, after all. Yeah, well, this apprentice ain't one to sit around and wait to be told what to do, even by the boss. That's why I've been doing me own investigations into what happened. I didn't find much at first. But a little search of the boss's office turned up a notebook that had a lot of secret meetings in it. Hold it! So, you went through Inspector Gregson's things. Yup, as part of the independent Lestrade investigation. I'm sure you, your superiors will be delighted that you're taking the initiative. So I snuck into his office when no one else was about. Because if anyone at the yard seen me going in there, they'd have turned me straight out on the street. This is sounding less and less like an investigation, and more and more like something else. <laughs> the prosecution understands that it was this very detective who discovered the notebook. You got that right, nothing gets past Inspector Lestrade and our trusty assistant, Chief Inspector Toby. We found it hidden in one, hidden in one of the desk drawers that had a false bottom. That's impressive. So then I went to hide myself where no one could find me so I could have a butcher's at what was written in it. Because if anyone at the yard found me out, they'd have turned me straight out on the street. Huh. I've given it in now though, ain't I? And if it weren't for me, it would never it would never have been found. According to that, the boss was looking into some smuggled good dealings that day. Hold it! Let's get more information on this. Do you have any idea where those dealings were taking place? Yup. It was all there in the boss's notes. Let's see if I can remember. Um As I already said, the illegal dealings were due to take place at a gentleman's club. Yes. I remember, but I was hoping to find out the name of the club. That won't be necessary. No, it's very necessary. What? It's conceivable that the club might be used again by the smugglers in the future. Therefore, the prosecution has been asked not to reveal the name in those proceedings. I don't know what all this fuss is about. It's right here. All I've got to do is read it out. And I could too. I've got this reading game buttoned up now. Can I, sh uh, can I show you what I I can do? Go on, what's the arm? The judge hasn't signaled his objection yet. I could try to find out. What should I do? Insist. This is a closed court. The proceedings are confidential. There shouldn't be any possibility of the information being leaked. As I explained, there is some possibility of politicians being involved in this affair. The prosecution is rightfully exercising caution. I imagine. No, my lord. The prosecution has no objection. Look at how, str uh, how pissed Lord Strongheart is. Kazuma. There's no question that Inspector Gregson was looking into these black market dealings. However, it's not yet been established that he was on that particular trail on the day in question. If the defense requires to know the club's name, the prosecution has no intention of being obstructive. I've never done an Ace Attorney case like this before, where you fight against the judge. The ju I feel that the judge is involved. Like, it's, a, it's such a strange case. You're defending a prosecutor, and the judge in the, in the case is the judge that's in on it. And then it's like the, um, uh, the a pro other prosecutor's your best friend also. It's just such a strange, bizarre case. I get to show off me reading skills. Apparently a smuggled goods deal was going to happen at a gentleman's club called the Grouse. Hold it! The Grouse. What sort of a club is that? I ain't got the fo foggiest. Clubs ain't exactly my thing. But I'm kind of curious. They're not places where a foreign student like you would be really readily admitted. Have you uh, looked in the mirror recently? <laughs> I tell you what. Me and Chief Inspector Toby could go in undercover. Could you, though? I could pick out a few good marks, and see what else I could, um, find out while I was in there. I really don't think you should go picking out anything. Anyway, that's where those black market dealings were going to take place, is it? Yeah, it's gotta be. That's what the lower-ranking detectives at the yard reckon. Says the even lower-ranking detective. Looks like it was a big job and all, but the coppers weren't it. 
onto it yet. Hold it! So how had Inspector Gregson come to find out about it in that case? That's the question, ain't it? But I'm just an apprentice, so... And why didn't he inform Scotland Yard of his findings? Yeah, that's what I was asking myself, cause you know... I'm just an apprentice. When it suits you, yes. Anyway, the point is, something went on at that club, no question. You can't say that for certain, though, surely. What matters most is there's witnesses what saw the Reaper at the place, too. What witnesses? Find out more information on this. Lord Van Zeeks was at the club? He was. Detectives who visited the club yesterday to make inquiries have confirmed it. Several members report having seen the accused being admitted to the room in question as a guest. It looks like there's no disputing that he was there then. Well, we know that Lord Van Zeeks was investigating Inspector Gregson, don't we? Perhaps he'd already discovered the Inspector's secret notebook. Which led him to the club, you mean? Maybe. Presumably, then, there are also eyewitnesses who can testify that Gregson was there? None have been identified identified at this time, no. So the all-important victim wasn't seen at this mysterious club. Oi, what? Why ain't you asking Inspector Lestrade, you're at, eh? So that's all I've got to work with. Gina's not holding back with that ice-cold stare of hers, is she? I really don't know what to make of all this. Lord Van Zeeks told us that he was investigating Inspector Gregson. But he never once mentioned that he met the uh, inspector the day before the incident. You don't think Lord Van Zeeks could have been lying to us, do you? That's not the only way to explain this. Oh? If everything Lord Van Zeeks has told us is true, then there must be a mistake in, his, in this testimony somewhere. You mean, there are details we've yet to uncover, exactly. Oh wow, <laughs> exactly. Um... A clue, perhaps, that even Gina hasn't noticed. I literally just said that. <laughs> um, uh... That's what we should be looking for here. It's kind of crazy how many times I've predicted, like, what the characters are gonna say. Um... Okay, I think it's with that, that club. The Grouse. There's so much evidence in this case, oh my god. The grouse, it has to be here somewhere. Have you seen this huge gash across the side of the trunk here? It's gone right through the leather and into the metal behind. Gosh, for a metal chest like this to have been so badly damaged, whatever made this gash must have struck the side of the trunk with considerable force. Wonder how it happened. And then we also have this, remember the blood. But because we loaded up chapter 10, I guess it didn't save from chapter 9. Look at this dark stain here, do you think? Yes, I'm afraid so, I think it's blood. Ah, uh, I knew you were going to say that. So that presumably means that this was present at the scene when Inspector Gregson was killed. It's the most logical conclusion, yes. To think Gina's been carrying this around with her. If you didn't know any better, I suppose it does look like a grease stain from all the fish and chips. And check inside here. Let's have a look inside. Look, there's something inside. Oh, let's see. It appears to be a passport, authorizing him to travel overseas. Was Inspector Gregson about to go on a trip abroad then? Perhaps the date of departure might tell us something. That was... Oh. What is it? It was for travel on the 31st of October, just one day before the incident. What? Really? Right, this is the passport. Gregson went to France the day before his body was discovered. Okay. Well, I suppose we should see what this inspector's identification looks like inside. Mm. 
The Scotland Yard insignia looks genuine to me. And the department identification number details are all correct as well. There's no doubt that this really is Inspector Gregson's identification. Right, the ticket, um... The SS Grouse? What? Wait, it was the... <sighs> okay, so it's... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's not a club, it's a ship! Oh man, my controller dies at the worst moment too. This is the... Damn, okay, hang on. This is the ticket that... This is the ticket that, um, uh, Professor Mikotoba gave us to just write on the back of... To think it's been almost a year since we arrived in De Dover on the SS Buria. Yes, I agree. I have mine safely in my diary. I keep mine in my wallet, so I have it with me at all times. Oh, uh, well, how strange. Where could it have gone? Are you like this on purpose, Mr. Narahodo? Did I imagine it, or was that comment accompanied by a little sigh? So this is where, you know, he wrote the, um... Uh, a note of introduction on the behalf of Professor Mikotoba. This, the, 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 the ship. So... Gregson was on the same ship that, that, um, uh, Mikotoba and Jigoku were on? And what if there was some a ship? That's right, a ship. A ship would have had refrigeration. It would. A ship would have a big refrigerators. It would because on a ship they're 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 out at sea for months and months, and so they have to keep food refrigerated on the ship. These ships back then would take months and months and months to travel, especially to like Asia, so from Europe. So that they probably Gregson's body was probably in some big refrigerator on the ship. That's probably what it was. Objection. I've read about these clubs that exist here in Britain, as I understand it. They're places where well-to-do gentlemen socialize with friends and colleagues. Don't imagine for a second that a foreign student like you would be admitted. Seriously, is your mirror cracked or something? Do we know for sure that the contraband dealings were definitely happening at a club called the Grouse? The police are currently looking for evidence, but haven't found anything definitive yet. And I'm sorry to say that they probably won't. What do you mean by that? I mean, that the place Inspector Gregson was secretly going to visit on 31st of October may not have been a gentleman's club at all. You're showing a very irrelevant attitude towards our country's police force there, Council. No, we're, um, uh, we're talking facts here, Strongheart. If it wasn't a gentleman's club, then what was it? A steamship. You think it's a ship. I have the evidence to prove it. Here. Let me see that. This dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. Ah, uh, um, the other side, my lord. Be more specific next time. Ah, uh, this would appear to be a ticket for passage upon a steamship, yes. The SS Grouse. Look at how, the, how Strongheart didn't get shocked at all. He didn't get shocked because he knew. So there's a steamship named the Grouse that happens to share a name with the club. But I'm afraid to say... There's a flaw in your logic there. How? How? Oh my god. Look at the ticket. Notice that the date of arrival in port. The ship arrived at the port of Dover on 1st of November. Ah. The day on which the sound like a gunshot was heard on Fresno Street. Because Gregson... Was Gregson might have been killed on the ship? In other words, on the day in question here, 31st of October, when the victim was his on his clandestine mission, 
That ship hadn't yet docked on British shores, but Gregson could have left. That would certainly make an undercover investigation somewhat challenging. Objection. The fact that the steamship hadn't yet reached Britain substantiates the defense's assertion that the victim was investigating the SS Grouse on the day in question. Then show your evidence for that assertion. Very well. In that case, counsel for the defense. Present your evidence to the court now. Evidence that substantiates your claim that the victim was investigating the SS Grouse on the 31st of October. How do I prove that Gregson was on the ship? There are details of a whole raft of cases dating back years on here, aren't, aren't there? The paper from 10 years ago is browning of age, look. Out of interest, the most recent thing appears to be this newspaper cutting here. Oh, it's the same red-headed league advertisement that Mr. Sholmes had picked out. And do you remember, there was a red ha hairpiece at the scene too. Was Inspector Gregson an exponent of the red-headed league then? Wait, the newspaper. Let me look at the newspaper. Pence, there is now another vacancy open. League to a salary, uh... Lime Street, um... Where was the ship going to dock? Oh, it looks like some sort of steamship ticket. The SS Grouse. First Class Cabin. 001. Yokohama Departure, 11 September. London Arrival, 1st November. Ah, uh, that's the boat that Professor Mikotoba and Judge Yoku came on from Japan, isn't it? Yes, I think it's called a Dunkirk on the north coast of France for a night before finally arriving in Dover. I think it's been almost a year since we arrived in Dover on the SS Buria. Seems a shame not to keep your ticket as a memento of your trip. Okay, we've already read this. Okay, how do I prove that Gregson was investigating the ship? His passport, maybe. Yeah, it'll be. I think his passport. Yeah, his passport. Let's see. Take that. What's this? A passport for travel issued to the victim. Dated 31st October. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that just one day before the inspector's body was discovered. There's a distinct possibility. He wasn't even in the country. Order, order. This document is for passage to France. It does appear to have been officially authorized. The day before the SS Grouse arrived at Dover. It docked on the northern coast of France for a night. According to my father who was on board, at the port of Dunkirk. Dunkirk, France. What could possibly have taken the victim there? What's so funny? I'm impressed, Rinosuke Naruhoto. I certainly didn't expect you to get your hands on that passport. What? You mean, you knew about this? You see, now that- he just- it, you know, this, this is- this is what's really unrealistic. Because the prosecutor was withholding evidence at this point. He knew about that fact, but yet, um, uh, he was denying that the, that the victim could have left. So you see, technically he broke the law just now. The prosecution strategy for this trial has been laid down by the Crown Prosecutor's Prosecution Office. On the day before the incident, the victim was investigating contraband dealings at a London club. That's the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigations, and the line the prosecution has asked to follow. But personally, I don't agree. I think the prosecutor's office is trying to hide something. What? And now that you've expertly disproven their assertion, I intend to reveal what I believe that's some something to be. So he wanted us to disprove the prosecution's argument. He, isn't that weird? What are you playing at, uh, Prosecutor Osoji? 
A courtroom is a forum for the truth, my lord. Which is why it's my duty to present all the facts, without exception. Let me guess. This was your intention from the outset, wasn't it? The reason Inspector Gregson secretly made his way to the steamship docked in France on the day in question was to carry out a mission for the Reaper. The the Reaper? Order, order. What on earth are you saying, Counsel? The prosecution made an assertion in court yesterday. Inspector Gregson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. As I'm sure everyone can imagine. By the Reaper's hand. But in reality, the truth is the opposite of that. What? Inspector Gregson wasn't investigating the Reaper at all. He, he was working for the Reaper. He was, in fact, acting for the Reaper. So, you're saying the mission he was undertaking was... Obviously, an assassination. But who was he trying to kill? Barrack Van Zeeks never carried out any of the actual killings. Whenever the Reaper's victims lost their lives, he always had a cast iron alibi. Which tells us that he must have had an accomplice. And you claim that was Inspector Gregson. What, what in the L, uh, L do you think you're saying, eh? My boss would never have done nothing like that. And yet, when you consider all the facts, it all makes perfect sense. No, it, it can't be. We also arrived at the same conclusion, didn't we? That Inspector Gregson uh, was operating as a Reaper. Even so, there's no way that the person giving him his orders was Lord Van Zeeks. No, the true Reaper is someone else. It's Strongheart. Barrack Van Zeeks is not the Reaper. A predictable response from someone who's advocating for the man. And even if it's true that Gregson was operating as an agent of the Reaper, the suggestion that he went aboard the SS Grouse on an assassination mission doesn't fall at all. Oh? You have some solid reason for doubting the assertion, do you, Counsel? Absolutely. It's very simple. On the day in question, nobody was killed aboard the steamship. Hmm. Professor Mikotoba and Judge Igoku were on, on, on that very ship. I wonder if um, uh, if Judge Igoku was the target. If someone had... Because Judge Igoku disappeared. Remember, he disappeared in the previous case. Um, uh, if they don't know where he is. If somebody had been assassinated, I'm certain we wouldn't have... We would have heard about it. Piffed. What's so funny? You're right, of course. No suspicious deaths were reported on board the ship. But I think, perhaps, you've mis missed the point. That's precisely why Inspector Gregson himself lost his life. What? Gregson did board the SS Grouse that night with the intention of dispatching his mark. But his mission ended in failure. Failure? It seems that the defense hasn't yet grasped a very important detail here. What are you talking about? What detail? Inspector Gina Lestrade. Eh? What? The victim's notebook that you read in an excerpt from earlier. That doesn't contain details of secret investigations at all. It describes ten years of assassination plots to be carried out by the Reaper of the Bailey. You're lying. Even if all them bludgers what got taken out added coming. The boss weren't the Reaper. Poor Gina. There's no question that Tobias Gregson was heavily involved in the Reaper's activities. You may just be an apprentice, but if you spent any time at Scotland Yard, you must have heard rumors. I ain't heard nothing, and I don't believe a word of it. Then testify again, as a representative of Scotland Yard. Consider it. Your chance to defend your boss. I, I, I don't... I concur. The witness will give a new formal testimony. Miss Lestrade, you will tell the court everything you know about Inspector Gregson's secret notebook. Witness testimony. I'm really curious what this is going to be. The Reaper's notebook. Yeah, this notebook does have a load of stuff about what the Reaper got up to uh, those past 10 years. 
names of the victims, dates, and places and stuff. And the last entry in there was 31st of October. It said Grouse for the place on that date. And then the name of the mark. There was a note about I'm him being a criminal, what got away from the Reaper in court 10 years ago or some at. But honest, the boss didn't do none of it. He, he was he was just investigating the Reaper, that's all. Keep personal opinion out of your testimony, witness. We require only established fact here. This must be so hard for her. You can't deny it now, surely, Rinosuke Narahodo. What can I deny? The notebook contained the names of the final mark, and the location where the assassination would take place. That's information that the victim could only have known, if he was working with the Reaper. Ah! So, who was to be this final mark? Go ahead, Inspector Lestrade. Read the name for the court. The name that's written alongside the entry that mentions the grouse on 31st of October. Was it Judge Goku? Whose name is it? Uh, how'd you read this then? Reading's still not her strong suit. That ain't the problem, alright, Otto? It's a funny name. It ain't English. It's hard to read. So it's someone from overseas. Let me have a bash at it. Say... Say-ish... Shashiro, is it? Yeah, Shashiro. Jigoku, maybe. J Judge Jigoku. What? It it can't be. Shashiro Jigoku. But that's Judge Jigoku. Exactly, Shashiro Jigoku. I predicted it. Uh, certainly not an English name. You're right. Objection. But I wonder where he is now, because he disappeared. But that can't be right. I know Judge Goku, and I saw him the day before yesterday here in London. So I know for a fact the man hadn't been assassinated. As I said, the Reaper failed. Oh? Gregson missed his chance to kill his mark and returned to British shores. I wonder if Judge Goku killed Gregson on the boat. But why was Judge Goku being targeted? He was involved in that trial 10 years ago. He testified in favor of, um, of Kazuma's father, Asoji. Um... Genshin Asoji. But the Reaper wouldn't tolerate the mistake, so he killed the Inspector. Personally. The Reaper, of course, being the accused. Barrack Van Zeeks. No. It's an undeniable logical argument. Kazuma. You planned for the trial to go this way all along, didn't you? Hold it! Oh, what? That's Barrack. Pray forgive the discourtesy of filling my hallowed chalice while I stand accused of murder. What? You're drinking even when you're accused of murder? When are you gonna stop drinking, dude? Um, uh, Lord Van Zeeks. The accused has no right to speak uninvited in court. You were returned to the dock. I say nothing of whether or not I'm the Reaper. That's a task of this court to decide. But there is one thing I can say unequivocally. That girl is no detective. Eh? What? Nah, that's right, I ain't. I'm an inspector. Repeating rumors heard around the yard. Reading entries from a notebook of unconfirmed origin. That's not testimony. It's practically a script. No doubt the rest of this trial will go exactly as you've clearly planned. Your hatred of me is understandable. In your mind, I'm sure, I am the Reaper, who sent your father to the gallows all those years ago. But you're in danger of becoming a far more sinister Reaper yourself. By attempting to have me condemn this feeble excuse for testimony, what did you say? Yeah, <laughs> Zeke's just owned him. Um, Mr. Narahodo, this is our chance. My lord, the defense requests the defendant be allowed to speak. He may be privy to important information relating testimony just given by the witness. Very well. I'll make an exception and grant the request. The defendant may remain in the witness stand for the cross-examination. 
Then allow me to toast the course impartiality. Don't raise your glass in my direction, sir. Counsel for the defense, begin the cross-examination immediately. At once, my lord. The Reaper's Notebook. Yeah, this notebook does have a load of stuff about what the Reaper got up to those past 10 years. Hold it! In other words, words, it shows that Gregson was basically acting as the Reaper. Not you and all. That ain't the only explanation, is it? He could have been investigating the Reaper in secret, and this notebook said what he found out. If I may. When originally people began referring to me as the Reaper, I didn't object. I believed the power to in intimidate London's criminal classes into compliance to the law to be beneficial. But you carried out your own investigations into the true identity of the Reaper, didn't you? Yes, and those investigations proved conclusively that Gregson was one arm of the Reaper. One arm? What are you on about? It means that he was he was part of the organization. He wasn't the main um the main part of it. An arm means that he was part of it. The Reaper is in a, an organization of people. The, vi the Reaper's victims were all extremely shrewd criminals at the top of their game. There's simply no way one person could have taken them on alone. The Reaper is an organization. Yep. With you at its head. I had spies the yard keeping me abreast of Gregson's movements, letting me know when he was elsewhere. So I've been able to check the most recent entry in his book. I knew the location. You knew it said Grouse. Yet, believing it to be a reference to the Gentleman's Club, I went there on the day in question to investigate, alone. Ah, so that explains why several members of the club claimed to have seen you there. But of course, the inspector was not there. Because at the time, he was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France, as shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. Very well, then. Back to your testimony about the contents of this notebook. Fine. Is something wrong, Mr. Naruhodo? You seemed a little shocked by something a moment ago. Oh, no. It's... it's alright. I'm overthinking this, aren't I? Names of the victims, dates, and places and stuff. And the last entry in there was 31st of October. Hold it! Names of victims, dates, places, and stuff. What in particular? Well, besides the victims' names, this other uh, name kept cropping up. What other name was that? It's the one I told you yesterday. The same name, written over and over again. You mean... As a Shin. Yeah. That's the one. She's a friend of yours or, or summit, isn't she? Were you even listening yesterday? As a Shin. The assassin. What? Like, a killer, you mean? Gregson was the tactician, the one who came up with the plan of attack. He investigated the marks thoroughly, finding out when they would be vulnerable, and who to use to get at them. But the person actually executing his plans was someone else, you're saying. If that's true, then the Reaper does indeed start to sound like an organized group of vigilantes. Ah, then perhaps what it said on the passport document. Permission for the application, and one additional person to travel. Could that additional person have been? Clearly the assassin, who was meant to take Shiro Jigoku's life. Gina, can you confirm that against the final entry that listed Grouse and, this, and Shishiro Jigoku? What name was written? Oh, well, that's the only entry that didn't have a name next to it, as it appear happens. What? It, it just add a question mark or somewhat there, I think. In other words, Gregson himself didn't know the identity of the assassin in that, in that case. But Gregson was the one making the plans, was he not? Oh, how infuriating. A nameless assassin. Wonder who that, that nameless assassin could be. Because a Asa Shin is dead, she died in Japan. It said Grouse for the place on, the, on that date, and then the name of the mark. Hold it! And you're saying the mark listed was Shishiro Jigoku. That's what it said. Funny name, if you ask me. 
and I thought your name name was odd. So pleased uh, to have lost my crown there. Mr. Jigoku is the presiding judge of Japan's Supreme Court of Judica Judicature. I remember the man. He came to our country as a visiting student 16 years ago. Studying international law and diplomacy under your tutelage, Lord Strongheart. That bearded young fellow was a very able man, I must say. So Lord Strongheart was Judge Igoku's mentor. If I'm not mistaken, he returned to Japan 10 years ago now. 10 years ago, after the fateful case. Precisely. In the aftermath of the Professor case, his rep repatriation was organized immediately. I wonder, could Judge Igoku have been the real, um, Professor Serial Killer? I wonder. And is that why he's being targeted? I wonder. It's a mystery why such a man would be listed in the inspector's notebook. I didn't think it was possible, but the mood in ears got even worse now. Maybe I'll just keep talking. There was a note about I'm him being a criminal what got away from the Reaper in court 10 years ago or summit. A criminal who got away. Hold it! But he got acquitted. What do you mean a criminal? Judge Goku is no criminal. Well, don't ask me. I don't know nothing about it. Oh, you remember what father told us? That Judge Goku did once appear in court here in Britain. Yeah, he did. He testified on behalf against an Asoji. And then he got, he got arrested for obstruction of justice or contempt in court, something along those lines. It was related to the Professor case, I'm sure. Yes, of course, you're right. Sashiro is trying to mitigate Genshin's guilt, so he took to the stand to testify. But he got a little carried away and um, actually managed to break the witness stand. He also said some contemptuous, contemptuous words about the British Empire for which he was charged, so contempt in court. It was a pitiful situation, yes. I'd forgotten all about it, but I prosecuted that trial too as it happens. You did. It was considered to be an adju adjunct to the professor proceedings, you see. But he was acquitted after being told to make reparation for the damage caused to the stand. And there you have it. Have what? Surely the accused hasn't forgotten his own rule. That there is no saving anyone who faces the Reaper in court, guilty or innocent alike. What? No. Are, are you suggesting that the reason Judge Goku was targeted for assassination? Because he broke the witness stand? Oh, come on. The man was sent back to Japan immediately after that trial. The Reaper had no time to do his work. But then, ten years later, the Mark returns to British Britain once more. Perhaps now, you start to see just how vindicative the Reaper is. Come on, that's absurd. To take someone's life for that? Isn't the whole premise of the Reaper absurd? Killing those who have been found innocent? Clearly, the rules by which the man operates are beyond a sane person's comprehension. But... Right, I've just had about enough of this. Gina? All this nonsense about the boss planning to kill people. It's cobblers. Come on, Otto. Yes? <laughs> yes. That was just a weird response. Why ain't you saying nothing? Why, why ain't you yelling out objection or some that? What? You've got to find a flaw. You do usually. Someone's lying here, no question. You've got to work out who it is. Please, for the boss. Oh, she's taking this really personally because remember, she was in jail and then after she got out of jail, she, she was a pickpocket and Gregson helped her off the street to become a cop. So she's, she, she's very personally in, in, involved in this case. That outburst, that outburst was an insult to the court and to your own testimony. I might have known that a common pickpocket from the back slums couldn't make a detective. Wow, what a piece of crap Lord Strongheart is. I feel so bad for Gina right now. When this trial is over, you will forfeit your warrant card, Miss Lestrade. Is that clear? Uh, uh. 
I've had it w with a lot of you. It's lies. Every bleeding place you look in the world in it. Well, I've had enough. Gina. So have I, after that little speech of Gina's. I've made up my mind. To do what, Mr. Naruto? There was one point in this cross-examination when something that was said just didn't sit right with me. One statement that seemed odd. Oh, do, do you mean... I'm not going to let Gina's plea for help fall on deaf ears. Come on, Otto, help! You've got to find a flaw somewhere. Hold it! I want to thank you, Gina. You helped me find my resolve. Eh? What do you mean? Amongst everything we've heard during this cross-examination, there's one thing that defies explanation. One inconsistency. What? An inconsistency. Something doesn't add up here. Really, Otto? I don't quite know what it means yet, but... Yes, there's an inconsistency in something that was said by... There was an inconsistency said by someone. There's only a few people that said something before. Gina spoke, Strongheart spoke, Barrack. The inconsistency has to be here. Let's look at through everything again here. Something that seemed odd. It's something here. You have to look at the dialogue. Something that someone said is odd.
something that somebody said was odd here. Look at what Van Zeek said, let's look. Wait. That there's no saving anyone. There's no saving anyone who faces the Reaper in court, guilty or innocent alike. That's the inconsistency. Isn't the whole premise of the Reaper absurd, killing those who have been found innocent? Clearly the rules by which a man operates are beyond the same person's comprehension. It's what Kazuma said. Be the reason is, Gina was on trial, and she was on trial by Lord Van Zeeks, and she was found not guilty. And it's been over a year, and she's never been she she she's never been targeted. No one has ever tried to kill her. It's what Kazuma said. Okay, let's see if this works here. Hopefully, it does. By you, Kazuma Soji. Me. Is this some attempt at filibustering counsel? Gina, Gina was the, Gina is the only person, because remember, the Reaper cannot target people that go to other countries. That's why the Reaper couldn't kill Professor Harebrain, because he went to Germany. That's why the Reaper couldn't kill, um, Judge Igoku, and couldn't kill Natsume, because they went back to Japan. But Gina stayed in Britain the entire time. She stayed in Britain the entire time. She was never targeted. No one ever tried to kill her. Um, uh... Prosecutor Soji has given no testimony. What are you suggesting I said that was inconsistent? You let something slip that you shouldn't have. When I present the relevant piece of evidence, I imagine you'll realize what you've done. Very well then, counsel. Go ahead. What evidence reveals that this alleged inconsistency? Something Prosecutor Soji said. Okay, um... Uh... Wonder if I can do something here? What charming little rabbity version, Mr. Sholmes? Do you suppose this is how Iris sees him? Are you alright, Mr. Naruhoto? Your eyes are vertebrally boring into this poor doll's ears. Oh, sorry. I was just wondering. What do you suppose would happen if I were to tug its ears with all my might right now? I'm sure that we'll find out when the time is right. To become a proper gentleman, you really must learn stoic patience. But I want to know. We'll save that for the later part of the trial. How do I prove that Gina was... Uh, Gina was accused of murder? Um... This one, the notice board, with all the Reaper's victims on it, I think. I think this, let's see. Take that! So my initial impressions were correct. This is nonsense. Ah. You accuse your best friend and back it up with that. Clearly, Narina Suke, I 
Naruhado I know is dead. Ugh, struck down by my best friend. I believe what you intended to point out, Mr. Naruhado, was when Kazuma said... Because at the time, he was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France. As shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. Yes, that's exactly it. I take it from your expression that you're not going to let this go. Correct, my lord. I made a mistake, that's all. What are you suggesting I said that was inconsistent? You let something slip that you shouldn't have. When I present the relevant piece of evidence, I imagine you realize what you've done. Very well then, counsel. Go ahead. What evidence reveals the alleged inconsistency in something Prosecutor Soji said? Because at the time he was making his way to the steamship dock, as shown in the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. Because at the time he was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France. One additional person to travel. Who is that additional person? Take that. No, I made a mistake again. Damn. He was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France, as shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk.
It was removed from the scene, but recovered by Gina. Take that! This is a trunk that belonged to Inspector Gregson. I think I got it now. A metal construction, is it? It's certainly very heavy. What's this? The blood. Yup, that's it. A blood stain. And a relatively fresh one, too. What? You... you mean that ain't grease from all the boss's fish and chips? Fresh blood on the inspector's trunk. That suggests that the victim was traveling with that luggage when he was killed. That can't be. There was no mention of any trunk in Scotland Yard's report. Yes, there's a reason for that. Immediately after the inspector's body was discovered, one of the street peddlers made off with the trunk, hoping to sell it. But I found it, me. With me nose for trouble. Hmm. Which means that nobody should have known anything about the trunk. Unless, of course, we're talking about somebody who was present when the victim was killed. And yet, during the cross-examination of the witness just now, you said this, Kazuma. Because at the time, he was making his way to the steamship dock on the northern coast of France as shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. So, the question is, how did you know about the inspector's trunk? That is a how did he know? The only way he know, we know the man went on a trip to France. I wonder if he went with, 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 um, Gregson. Because the passport says, room for one more, that's what I was looking at earlier. Because I was trying to present it then, but I guess I presented that evidence too early again. Where else would he have put his passport? Objection. But you knew it was a metal trunk. Answer me honestly, Kazuma. On 31st of October, where exactly were you? At the port of Dunkirk, on board the SS Grouse. Is that the answer you're looking for, Rinosuke? Kazuma, what did you... I hadn't considered the possibility before, but if Kazuma was there on the ship, then it can only have been for one purpose. Oh no, Mr. Naruhoto, surely, surely you don't think. Come on, Reinosuke, you know the rules. The only thing that really takes uh, talks in the courtroom is hard evidence. Wait a second. Only something really sharp could have done this, something really strong. A metal trunk like this, only something really strong could have done this. This is Kazuma's sword. Kazuma's sword did this. As I understand it, Inspector Gregson always took that case with him when he traveled. So as it stands, you've proved nothing. Kazuma. Are you challenging me to prove it? beyond all reasonable doubt that you were there that day in the same place as the inspector he he was there with Gregson there's a clue you've overlooked a secret that trunk that trunk can tell us I can't be sure at this point I'll need to verify it but I have a nasty feeling that I'm going to be right it's that slash in the trunk the accusation being made is deeply disturbing but nevertheless we must test it the defense will identify for the court where in the trunk this alleged cl clue is to be found. Where is the evidence that ties Prosecutor Sochi to Inspector Gregson? The Slash. Got it. This is your proof. What do you say to that, Prosecutor Soji? Personally, I think trying the defense counsel for the inspector's trunk and tossing in the sea would be more helpful. What? At least that way, London's courtrooms will be safe from his destructive accusations. I believe that was a rather long-winded way of telling you that you're wrong, Mr. Naruhoto. Very well. Then let us see if you sink or swim under the weight of this penalty council. What? But no, it was the slash in the trunk. You can't allow yourself to be drowned at sea yet. I, I was hoping to never let that happen, funnily enough.
Have you seen this huge gash across the side of the trunk here? It's gone right through the leather and into the metal behind. Gosh, for metal chests like this to have been so badly damaged, whatever made this gash must have struck the side of the trunk with considerable force. I wonder how it happened. Let's have a look inside. It's the gash, like I'm I'm convinced it's that, but I mean, I'll try to, um, the blood doesn't prove anything. It doesn't prove that it's Kazuma. This, this is the only thing that can prove that, that he did it because it's his sword that did that. His sword did made that slash. But I, I already said the, the, and they said wrong. Got it. Damn, I, I, it's wrong again. I'm gonna have to save here. Oh, it's this. This is what I'm supposed to look at. There's a piece of the sword stuck inside. That. That's the proof. So I was right. I just wasn't. I was. I wasn't looking at the right angle. There's a small piece of metal lodged in the wall of the trunk here, like the tip of a blade. Eh? A blade. Kazuma, slung around your waist as ever today. Is the steam blade Karuma? Of course it is. Won't you draw it, here in this courtroom, for all to see? Exercise caution, my learned friend. That man is the son of London's most notorious killer. Bailiff, watch pr pr Prosecutor Soji like a hawk. That won't be necessary. The tip is... No, there it is. Oh no. The tip is broken. If the fragment of metal from the trunk fits together with the end of the sword, the question of who was there with Inspector Gregson will be answered. Agreed, Kazuma Soji. Expertly done, Reinosuke. That's a point to you, and well deserved. Do you mean to tell the court, Prosecutor Soji? Yes, on 31st of October, I accompanied Inspector Gregson to Dunkirk. In order to carry out a mission. So the additional person, person authorized to travel was me. And the mission was the assassination of the Mark. What? What? You mean, you're the killer whose name was omitted from this notebook. You were following the Reaper's orders to dispatch Judge Higoku. Let me make one thing perfectly clear. I have killed no one. Explain. I accepted the assassination mission, yes, and I accompanied Gregson to Dunkirk, but I never had any intention of carrying out the plan. You were never going to do it. We can believe Kazuma-sama, I'm sure. After all, Judge Igoku arrived safely in London the following day. Hmm. On the 31st, I boarded a train from London with Inspector Gregson. 
We traveled to Dover from where we crossed the channel to Dunkirk. Then we boarded SS Grouse and made for the cabin deck as indicated in the plan. You went to Judge Igoku's cabin? Exactly. He wasn't there though. We decided to wait, but... But you've already told us you had no intention of going through with it anyway. I didn't come to Great Britain to take on anyone's life. So I left Gregson and disembarked the ship. I spent that night at a boarding house in the town and returned to England the following morning. A boarding house in Dunkirk. My signature will be in the register book. It will be simple enough to verify. Then, what became of Jigoku? Gregson was no assassin, so the mark was spared. I'm sure it's easy enough to imagine what happened after that. Gregson returned to England as well, having failed to complete the mission. He met with the Reaper in that room on Fresno Street to report the failure. Causing the infuriated mastermind to pull the trigger. And end his wretched agent's life. No, that's not what happened. That's the real truth behind Inspector Gregson's murder. Objection. But if you did nothing as you claim, how did the tip of your sword come to be lodged in the inspector's trunk? Exactly. I don't need to answer that. You do. That's very relevant. The victim was killed by a gunshot. A small fragment of a Japanese blade is relevant to the case. No, it's very relevant. There's blood in the trunk, and the tip of your blade is stuck inside it. And accordingly, I chose to exercise my right to silence on that matter. Be that as, as it may, the court will sequester the sword as evidence. As you wish, my lord. Great Sword Karuma, the illustrious blade passed down through generates the Asoji clan. The prized sword tip has a small piece missing. We must take immediate action now to verify whether Sashiro Jigoku remains unharmed. What? R remains unharmed? I agree. That should be our first priority. It's recently come to my attention that he hasn't been seen since yesterday. That's true. How, how did you... When a foreign dignitary invited to Great Britain goes missing for 24 hours, it's only natural that the question of his safety should arise. You don't mean to say that you think Judge Goku may have been killed. The Reaper has more than one assassin at his disposal, and he has the power and influence to give orders from the inside of a prison cell. Isn't that right, Lord Van Zeeks? If I were truly the Reaper, I'd be able to tell you. Order, order in court, order. We will take an emergency recess for 30 minutes. Now? Guests at the symposium have been told to maintain regular contact with the organizer's office. If the man can't be located within half an hour, we will have to assume the worst. Oh no, not Judge Igoku. No one would want to kill a harmless Japanese man who'd only just arrived in the country. Except, that is... For the Reaper, wanting to finish off a mark that slipped through the net ten years ago. I would have to agree. Mr. Naruhoto, for the defense's sake... M my lord? I sincerely hope we are successful. If we're unable to confirm Mr. Jigoku's healthy existence in the next 30 minutes, you will face grave difficulties. Ah. Uh, court is adjourned for 30 minutes. What the hell is going on? Kazuma Sama, the Reaper's assassin. I feel as though I'm in a nightmare. I can hardly believe it either. But on the other hand, Kazuma isn't in the habit of making up stories. I have such a terrible sense of foreboding. If something awful has happened to Judge Goku, then I feel as though things will only spiral further and further out of control. I felt it from the moment I stepped into the courthouse this morning. That strange sensation that we were careering towards a fore foregone conclusion. Well, in the worst case, we might only have 30 minutes left. Unfortunately, though, I don't think that there's anything we can do but wait now. 
we're out of options. Actually, there may be one last hand we can play. Or rather, one last ear. Of course. The little Mr. Shones doll that Iris gave us. If for some reason you completely run out of options in the trial today, then just pull this little Harley's ears as hard as you possibly can. Perhaps now is the time. What should I do? Pull Harley... Harley's ears or not, pull. Here it goes then. I'm going to do it. Good luck, Mr. Naruhoto. No looking back. Heave. Ow! That scream sounded like Mr. Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes, where, where are you? Here, my dear fellow, here. It's the, the felt doll talking? Pull at ears again, Mr. Naruhoto, as hard as you can. Alright, then I'll pull all my strength into it. Heave! Ow, please, my dear fellows, you don't need to pull my ear off. Mr. Sholmes, where, where are you? Myself and my trusty partner are presently in the first class cabin area of the SS Grouse. The, the SS Grouse. She left Dover last night after a final piece of cargo were loaded. We are currently docked at Dunkirk, but due to be underway again in half an hour. You're... you've taken a ship to France! Please, even with my athletic power proudness, I would struggle to jump the straits at Dover. It's some kind of phone? After we've left Baker Street last night, we hurried by cab to the station and by train to the port. In order to board this vessel in time. So, you mean, you've already worked it out. That the steamship was where everything really took place. Mr. Naruhoto, pray, what is my name? Herlock Sholmes, world-famous great detective. Re recited to perfection, well done. You're a genius, Mr. Sholmes, that's the only word for it. Ow, 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 ow. Miss Suzato, gently with this genius's ear, please. Oh my, I'm ever so sorry. If I may, Sholmes. Ah, there you are, Mikotoba. You may remember that it was in, fa in fact I who made the connection to the SS Grouse. At Scotland Yard yesterday when we examined that notebook and I recalled my steamship ticket. But of course it was, my dear fellow. And not once did I controvert that fact. I merely had our court-bound um, companions utter my name. Yes, you did, didn't you? We've just entered a recess. This trial resumes in 30 minutes from now. And if we're unable to present any new leads then, I'm afraid to say... Do not fret, please. It's for precisely that purpose that my partner and I have made this journey. I have no doubt we shall have welcome news for you within the half hour. Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. That would be wonderful. Until later, then. Yes. You'll be hearing from us if you're not in touch first. Ow, I shan't be hearing anything if you keep tugging my ear in that mindless fas fashion. Huh. Whatever was the idea behind making a receiver operator in operated in that way in the first place, Sholmes. Why the deuce would I know? It's Iris's invention, not mine. Whilst I know how much you enjoy being the hero of the hour, Sholmes, we have but half that now before the grouse puts to sea again. If we don't conclude our investigations rapidly, we shall find ourselves in Naples before long. Hmm. There are times, Mikotoba, when you make a surprising amount of sense. So, let us begin. First class cabin number two. Yes, this is the one. But I don't believe an investigation of the cabin is going to be plain sailing. That crewman standing in front of the door is an angry-looking fellow. Why, uh, you are lo loitering here? Who are you? My dear fellow, do you not recognize a world-famous great detective when you see one? The question really ought to be, who are you? Do you not recognize the world-traveling great sailor, uh, t titching strong enough when you see? Yeah, he's from Case 2. I recognize him. He's just in a different uniform. Sholmes on his arm, look at that. Great detective, huh? I don't think so. Do you see that, Mikotoba? It would appear that this man is a devoted follower of mine. 
Goodness me, is is that a tattoo that says Sholmes? I must say, while such an adoration is flattering naturally, it does leave me a little cold. What are you talking about? Leaf! Now! How distressing. My loyal devotee knows me only by name and not by appearance. And yet, I already know a great deal about you, sir. You have a brother, I believe. Oh, his brother, that's... So he has a twin brother. Like yourself, he's a shipman. Currently traveling the world aboard a Russian steamship, in fact. How, how could you know this? Elementary, my dear Mikotoba. I'm sure it was. Three days ago, I was bound in London for aboard this ship, you see. We're looking for one of my fellow passengers, a man by the name of Jigoku. There is no one with this name on board. We know that he purchased a ticket for passage. Ah, you mean Eastern Man. He left the ship two hours ago. Here's here at Dunkirk. He said something about emergency, I think. What? Are, are you sure? So Shishiro's realized that we're after him, has he? His cabin is the one behind you. We should like to investigate, please. Something tells me Shishiro is really the professor. And Genshin was, um, uh, not guilty. No, I have orders not to leave even Mouse inside. Mikatoba, be a good man and draw this sailor's attention away, would you? Make up some excuse so that he leaves the area. Doesn't great detectives see? And even sailors have ears, both left and right. Curses, the plan is ruined. And you have only yourself to blame, I'm afraid, Sholmes. Forget it, cabin door is locked. Even if I am not here, you cannot get inside. Mikatoba, I'm sure you haven't forgotten my special talent, have you? Opening any lock. Within a mere five seconds. So if you're so kind as to afford me the requisite time, old friend, in your typical accommodating manner, how can I refuse such a typically unappealing request, old friend? So I need to distract that burly sailor for five seconds, do I? Good man, so, the game is afoot. What is this? Ah, the switch for the electrical lights. Perhaps if I were to turn off the lights, the crewman wouldn't be able to see what we were doing. Hmm. No, I think not. That would never work, surely. I need to concord another distraction. This would appear to be an alarm bell. All hell would break loose if that thing were to ring. The whole crew would know about it. Here it goes then. Pardon me in advance. You! What are you doing? If we were at sea, that would be a very bad problem. What's going on down here? Seaman Stroganov, report at once. Sorry, sir. Nothing to report. I was- it was just a stupid trick. No, not by me. By world-famous Noah, as I told you. Now, Shomes, now. Done. Not even five seconds, eh? Well, don't just stand there grubbing at my brilliance, Mikoto, but in we go. Oh, yes. Don't tell me we're gonna find a dead body in here. I really hope not. 3rd November, SS Grouse. First class, um, cabin, number two. Good gracious. It would appear that the occupant of this cabin did indeed disembark rather hurried, hurriedly. Are those prison clothes? They're Shishiro's without question. Well, we see- okay, that- no, that looks like sleeping trousers, um... Yes, so by about two hours. Still, whilst we're here, we should investigate thoroughly. There may be, well, two hours of clues to find in here, but that burly crewman may return any moment, Sholmes. Indeed he may, which makes this all the more thrilling. Let's see in here. According to the report I was given, Naruhato was concealing himself in a Soji's wardrobe. Indeed he was, and it was of a similar size to this one. Ah, you must climb inside yourself, my dear fellow. What? Whatever for. 
It was the site of my first, um, fateful meeting with Mr. Naruhodo. You are- you can experience the moment for yourself now, complete with my dramatic rhetoric. <laughs> Come along now, in you go. This will only take a moment. Really, Shom, surely you can just tell me what you said. Well, I uttered some brilliant remarks and opened the wardrobe to reveal a stowaway murderer. I think I'll just read about it in The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. What is this? Looks like a piece of cloth. There's a speaking tube here, look. Though it's been st stoppered with some cloth. So the voice of the crewmen on the bridge aren't an, an annoyance, I suppose. Or indeed, so that the voices in this cabin aren't heard elsewhere. Could something have happened in here that was for no one's ears, do you think? Either that, or... It could be to prevent snakes from entering. That's really become a favorite case of yours, hasn't it? Quite the exquisite glass, I must say. See here? How it... Is, is something wrong, Shomes? You suddenly trailed off. Ice, Mikotoba, ice. What opulence of the first-class passengers enjoyed chilled drinks. The ice would have melted by now. Pardon. Could it be that this steamship is equipped with an electrically refrigerated cold room, do you think? Exactly. That's where I was right in my early, um... In my early, um, uh, prediction. Re remember I said Gregson could have been put in the refrigerator on a ship? Because a big ship like this would have a refrigerated section, because they're out at sea for months, so they would have to refrigerate food. Well, it is a luxury liner, after all. They have enormous refrigerators for storing all sorts of lavish produce as well as ice. Yup, I was right. On our voyage from Japan, we enjoyed culinary delights from all over the world. Hmm. Suddenly, Mikotoba. The sight of you is making my mouth water. I haven't taken on the flavor of the food I hate, you know. Anything in here? This is the waste ba paper basket. Look, and there's still some rubbish inside. Indeed. Then let us pr pry. I've discovered recently I, I have a penchant for exploring the contents of other waste paper baskets. I sincerely hope only for your work. Ah. Here we have a notice issued to passengers from three days ago. Three days ago, the night before we arrived in London then, when I was still aboard myself. Following departure from the port of Don... Oh, I wasn't able to read all of it. Ah, uh, yes. There was an evacuation drill, I remember now. For our safety and security, all first-class passengers were constantly under the watchful eye of the crew. So it was a welcome relief to have some privacy for once. A notice about practice evacuation carried out by the crew on the SS Grouse the night before the ship arrived in Dover. It was found in Judge Goku's cabin. Wait a second, this was moved, or so- or- was this moved? Let's look at the clothes for a moment here. That's a substantial heap of clothes on the floor. An overcoat, shirts, a dressing gown. Moma hiki, work, trousers, a tanzan robe, a haramaki, waistband. Clearly the clothing of a Japanese man. And clearly, Japanese men are unaccustomed to the culture of the wardrobe. It looks to me as if they've been thrown into a heap like that, in something of a hurry. Indeed. You could help yourself to a Japanese man's shirt, perhaps. I'm sure you made mention of packing too few. I'd very likely drown in one of Shishiro's shirts. No, I'll just buy Nick's extras, I think. I need, I think. What's in here? That's a very sizable trunk, indeed. Shishiro's partial to all things large, and a rather clumsy fellow if he failed to notice he'd left that behind. Perhaps he left it on purpose. It's a, a lighter than you think, uh, might think, but still a hinder hindrance to a speedy escape. Hmm, pity. It's locked, so he can't look inside. Surely five seconds from now the situation will be quite different, though. Sadly not. It has a seven-digit combination lock. And I'm not in a uh, morose enough mood to work uh, through all the combinations at present. I wonder if the code is in here somewhere. These are the rules of passage. P 
passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Additionally, there are se severe punishments for stowing away in wardrobes and our travel cases. I feel the rules have increased since I last read them. Probably just my imagination. What about the fact that they're not straight on the wall? Doesn't that strike you? Hmm, you may be right. Probably just your imagination, though. A trifle. And you know what I always say, Mikotoba? There is nothing important about trifles. It's probably just my imagination, but I think that might be slightly off. Um, let's see this. I want to look at this. The wall is slightly different color just here. Do you see? Indeed. What have you observed arises when a frame that has been hanging for some time is removed? Perhaps your friend is an art thief. Now there's a bold deduction worthy of a great detective, I'm sure. He may very well be the elusive thief who has been plaguing France's galleries of late. I think perhaps we should focus our attentions elsewhere, Sholmes, don't you? That outline on the wall. I feel as though I might have spotted something of a similar shape and size elsewhere. Oh no. You! You are still here! Uh, Abel Seaman Stroganov. Hello again. I was beginning to think you'd never materialize. Eh? You... you are waiting for me? Of course! I was expecting you to burst in with a hearty Russian profanity far sooner. I was in trouble with Captain because of a trick you played before. Poor innocent Tichkin. It is all your fault. Ship is leaving port soon. Get off, now. Of course, we shall disembark presently, my dear fellow. But first, there is something that must be done. What are you talking about? Why naturally? The deb debunking of your deceit and the bear bearing of the truth. Kakoi? I'm afraid I see through your lies. For one thing, Mr. Jijoku has not yet left this vessel at all. Ah? Huh? And for another, my dear Seaman Stroganov, you know exactly where the man is, even as we speak, don't you? How, how, how can you... Good gracious, Sholmes. You mean... You've worked it out. All of it. It's really been too long, hasn't it, old friend? Ten years, no less. So, would you care to join me for a dance of my imit inimitable logic and reasoning? Nothing would please me more. W what is this? We have but minutes until the vessel puts to sea. No games now. Time is of the essence. Mr. Strong enough, allow me to remind you of your earlier um, claim. You told us that Jigoku left the ship some two hours ago. Da, that is what I said, that means yes in Russian. Sadly, that was a rather clumsy lie. You see, there is something in this room that quite clearly contradicts it. The ice. What? Ah, yes, of course. I see you've noticed it too, Mikotoba. Then please, do take the lead. What in this cabin shows the impossibility of Jigoku having disembarked two hours ago? Let's see what the last three years have done to your observational skills then, Mikotoba. It's been ten years since we last did this, Shones, not three. Why, of course it has, quite. Now, all the clues are here in this cabin for your eyes to see. But as I always say, you must not merely look, but observe. Observe and the answer becomes clear. So, impress me. I think I can manage that. What contradicts the claim that Jigoku disembarked two hours ago? I'd say it's the ice. I'm gonna save here to be safe, but... Oh, I can't even save here, but... Um, I'm gonna say it's the ice. The ice would have melted by now. Take that! Yeah, I noticed- 
I noticed it. I saw. I did it again. I noticed a piece of evidence that I was supposed. I wasn't supposed to notice until later on, that the ice was here because it would have melted if he had left two hours ago. This would have been all been water. Perhaps you should have cleared away that glass. How curious that the ice shouldn't have melted despite it being abandoned two hours ago. Yup. Noticed it right when we came in. It would appear the man was here in this very cabin until moments before our arrival. With this well-chilled glass in hand. Get your mind off the refreshments, Sholmes. One might even conclude that somebody informed him of our boarding. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Strong enough? Err. But, why would this hero run from us? Before we consider that question, allow me to confirm one small matter. Would I be correct in saying that these first-class cabins that SS Grouse are the same ones in which you and Mr. Jigoku were accommodated on your voyage from Japan? Ah, that's... that's... that's right. They are. I was in the cabin next door, and Shishiro was... yes. Fifty days in this very cabin during our voyage. As I suspected, for you see... There are traces in this cabin of a dark secret that Mr. Jigoku tried... had to hide. What traces? I... I know nothing about this. Ah, uh, this is news to you, is it, Mr. Strong enough? Sholmes, what exactly are you getting at? As I said, there are traces in this cabin of some nefarious activity. Something that appears out of place, which I'm quite sure won't have escaped your notice. Something out of place in here. That's the key to this, Mikotoba. The remnants of the dark deed that took place in here are being masked by something quite in... Incongruous. I must say, I didn't foresee ever doing this dance of deduction with you again, Mikotoba. Oh man, wait. I know what's being hidden- I know what's hidden in this room. I think I know what's hidden in this room. There- the wall. Look at the wall. How- I thought that was odd. That he took the sign off of that- that side of the wall and put it there. That was very strange to me. If you take that sign off of that wall right there, do you know what I think is going to be behind that wall? A bullet in the wall. That's what I think is going to be behind that wall. Let's see if I'm right. No, no quite, but if life is full of unexpected twists and turns as we well know, now then, let's see if I can uncover the truth here. Yes, you have the floor, my dear fellow. What's rather awkwardly, um, uh, hiding traces of the... of a crime? The rules of passage, this. Take that! I got it. When it shatters like that, it means you're right. Let's see if I'm right. Is there a bullet behind there? If there's a bullet back there, it means this is where Gregson died. The way they're hanging crooked on the wall, as if they were put there in a hurry. Yes, as I'm sure you've already concluded. That frame was originally over here. The shape and size are a perfect match. He's trying to hide a bullet in the wall, let's see. Da, you are right. When did frame move? Hardly the most observant of crewmen, are you, Mr. Stroganov? I would think your captain is quite justified in having his reservations about your reliability. Grr. Oh dear, that really seemed to touch a nerve. So, Mikatoba, why don't you lift that frame off the wall? I knew it! I did it! That looks... It's a bullet hole. Like a bullet hole. What? Who has been shooting walls? Gregson died in this room. This is where he died. And the blood went on, the, on the, his case. He died in this... Gregson died in this very room. Was it self-defense? Did he try to kill Judge Shigoku? Or was something else here? That ex explains everything. Gregson was killed in this room. He got shot... The bullet, uh, the bullet went through him into the wall, and then his body was taken down to the refrigerated room in the ship. That's what that's that's what happened. Damn, that's the, I I noticed that when when I started doing this case earlier, earlier in, in the other episodes that I did, I there was no bullet hole in the wall, which I thought that that was strange. There was no bullet um uh, hole there, but there's a bullet hole here. I see the projectile has been removed. Clearly, the careful occupant of this room has already disposed of it. Now then, Mr. Strong enough. Ah, I have the distinct impression that you're attempting to shield said occupant. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Why would I try to protect Eastern Stranger? Ah, so we're talking about the same man I see. Good. Ah. I'm sure we can get to the bottom of this in no time, aren't you? Because there's some very noteworthy evidence explains the reason why you're lying uh, for, for the man. The shomes on his arm. Yes, you've been told to keep up this pretense as clearly shown by... I really don't know how to approach this one, shomes. He, he had shomes written on his arm so that if anybody, anybody came by that had the name shomes, he would know to... Ah, uh, my dear Mikotoba, simply keep uh, first principles in mind. Study your subject from every angle. And I'm quite sure that you'll see it. In fact, I put a wager on it. So I'm to glare at, at the fellow from all signs. Well, I can certainly do that. Why is strong enough covering for someone? Oh, what is this? Wad of banknotes. Take that! He had Shomes written on his arm, and he's he's hiding banknotes, too. It's almost too obvious for words. White. The universal language of the world. Money. Ah. And I wager that the Eastern fellow in question... ...is Shishiro Jigoku, yes. Gah. So, I presume you realize what this means. There are clear signs that crime has been committed in this cabin. And by the... The way you're going, sir, you'll find yourself accused of being an accomplice. But, but I believe you know, Mr. Strong enough. You know where Mr. Jigoku is hiding at this precise moment in time. As always, Mikatoba, in matters of deduction, the furative glance is in your un is your unfaltering ally. Yes, I think you're onto something there, Shomes. You found the chink that in this burly fellow's armor. We need only follow the man's gaze uh, to know where our, our prey is hiding. He's looking straight at us. The slightest a flicker of the pupils, a minute, minutely delay blink. Nothing escapes my attention, even that which is barely perceptible. Well, Sherlock, Herlock Sholmes being much more competent than normal here. He's onto everything. You could hardly call this barely perceptible, Sholmes. The man's um, uh, turned his entire head. It's not entirely what you describe as a furative glance, is it? It's almost too obvious. We shall let your tapping toes decide, my dear fellow. Where might a certain someone be hiding? No, don't tell me that he's actually hiding in the trunk. Don't tell me he's actually hiding in the trunk. Is he really in the trunk? Is that why all the clothes are out on the floor? Because he wanted to hide in the trunk? Really? Could a big guy like that really hide? Because he's big. Could he, could he really hide in a trunk? Take that! You turned immediately to look at this, um, uh, large trunk, didn't you? Ah. The true fish, Shashiro Jigoku, was unable to escape from the ship in time. And is, at this very moment, doing his best to stifle his breath inside this trunk. If he still has a breath to take, I fear he may be running dangerously low on air. Hmm. I imagine he didn't count on us making a nuisance of ourselves for quite so long. I think it would be in everyone's best interest for us to open the trunk as quickly as possible. But, but how can we? Are you forgetting about the combination lock? We don't know the seven-digit code. The combination lock can't be opened from inside the trunk. Therefore, there must have been an arrangement for somebody to open it after our departure. Oh, good point there, Shomes. Of course. In short, before Jigoku hid himself inside that trunk, he must have told someone by the seven-digit a number for the lock. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is, is, is Shomes the... Shomes has seven characters to it. Is that, is that really the, the... Could that be the... Gulp. No. I know nothing about combination code. Don't move a muscle, my good seaman. Huh? Now, Mikatoba. 
Would you do the honors and open the trunk? How, how on earth do you expect me? It's a seven digit number, remember. Quickly now, we have little time. Shomes, um... Um... I have to look at all the numbers online, um, uh, because it's the nu the numbers. I know the the code. It's Shomes. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here, it's Shomes. Okay, hang on. Um, let me look at here. Shomes? Okay, wait, five? Wait a second here. Wait, is it upside down? It looks like it- it looks like it's upside down. Oh man, this is gonna be- this is gonna be a pain to read. Damn. Okay, the last number is five. Oh, damn. I have to try to look at this. Five. What is that other number there? What number could that be? Five, two? One, two. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Five, two, three. One zero. What is this? Four. It might be a six. The second number might be a six. It might not be a two. Is it does this go up to six? No. Okay, so it's, I think it's a two. Five, two. Oh my god, this is so stupid. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like going upside down right now. Five, two, three, one, zero, four, five. Let's see if it works. Take that! Did I get it? Did it work? Did my theory work? It's open. It did. How ironic that it was Shomes. You had to meddle, didn't you? Yeah, you meddling kids. <laughs> oh man, it's like, oh man, I, 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 I figured it out. It was upside down. You meddling kids. Well, Eugen, you found me now. Shashiro. I was really hoping beyond hope not to find you here, you know. But you're not entirely unsurprised, I take it. No, quite. I just wish it were some other way. Well, are you ever going to introduce me? Ah, your reputation precedes you, Mr. Sholmes. I've read stories of many of your exploits. Excuse my matter, Sholmes. This is Mr. Jigoku, uh, my old friend and traveling companion. The devil is in the details, Mikotoba. I believe you meant to say your old friend and traveling companion. Who made the cowardly decision to flee the country without a word to anyone who thinks turned sour. 
I see my reputation precedes me as well. What an honor. Well, Shishiro, are you going to explain all this? You know it all by now, I imagine. What you didn't know, of course, is that three days ago, on the night before our arrival in Britain, an attempt was made on my life here on this very ship. By the Reaper of the Bailey, you yes, I've since heard. Because you were once prosecuted by the Reaper, weren't you? Ten years ago now, mind you. And I had no idea at the time what a dangerous individual he was. Anyway, when we arrived in London to find the symposium, was postponed until goodness knows when. It became all too apparent to me that I might very well be targeted again. So he decided to flee the capital without saying a word to me about it. I'm afraid so, yes. Of course, I realize now that I really ought to have confided in you. It's somewhat surprising, I must say. What is? Well, first-class cabins aboard luxury steamships are in very short supply. It's more than a little hard to believe that this one just happened to be available. So says the protagonist of some colorful short stories. Well, I don't care for your opinion. The cabin did just happen to be available, so I purchased a ticket, and here I am. I've just seen for myself that the obvious remnants of that incident in this cabin. So you've already purchased your return ticket before we even docked in Dover, had you? There had anyone else taking this cabin and seeing the evidence, is that it? Eugene, I have nothing to say to you. Well, in a mere five minutes, this ship will set off on its onward voyage and not make port again until Italy. I'm afraid we must insist that you disembark of us at once. You have no jurisdiction over my movements. We have this, Sashiro. Take it. What's that? Wait, what? What is it? It's a subpoena from the old Bailey. You're a man of the law. You know what the ramifications of ignoring a document like this from the British courts would be. You came prepared then, Eugen. Come on, let's go. One moment. What is it, Sholmes? Inside Mr. Jigoku's trunk. I found this rather fascinating trinket. What is that? What is... Th oh wow, he said it too. What is that, Sashiro? I can't help you, I'm afraid. Some small component from something. But what? I have no idea. By the look on his face, I think he genuinely doesn't know. Well, let us pocket it as a small souvenir for a brief uh, sojourn in France. A small machine part that Mr. Shones found in Judge Goku's cabin on the SS Grouse. Well, young Narahodo, I think we've done as much as we can, I'm afraid. The rest will be on, on the shoulders of you and your assistant. Third November, 12:10 p.m. The Old Bailey courtroom. Wow, that was crazy. Kazuma Soji, I know you, and I know you wouldn't lie, but still, there's no doubt that you're holding something back. You know more than you're saying. During the past 30 minutes, while this court was adjourned, all possible efforts were expended. But sadly, Mr. Jigoku's whereabouts could not be ascertained. Nope, they found him. We must accept that the unfortunate conclusion that the Reaper has already done the de deed. There's no sense in wasting any more of the court's time. The prosecution calls for immediate verdict. Objection. No, the trial cannot end now. You're a Japanese man, Ryunosuke. You should know when to lay down your sword. And you should know never to presume when the battle is won. The court has already been presented with all the evidence and heard all relevant testimony. And there can only be one conclusion, that the accused is guilty. All relevant testimony, far from it. There's still a crucial witness, from uh, whom the court is yet to hear a single word of testimony. In that case, Call your witness to the stand at once, counsel. Yes, my lord. Tomorrow, if possible. 
The witness is already on his way, and scheduled to arrive tomorrow. Who on earth is this crucial witness? Seshiro Jigoku. The very man allegedly murdered by the Reaper. J Judge Jigoku, you found him. But the investigation's very policing resource in the capital suggested Jigoku is already dead. How in the name of God did you find a man? He was located in France during the recess at the port of Dunkirk. Thanks to one of Mr. Herlock Sholmes' famous deductions. Herlock Sholmes. Inspector Gregson almost certainly met with Mr. Jigoku on the night of his death. Because along with Prosecutor Soji, Gregson was on a mission to assassinate the man. Which means that Shashiro Jigoku is a sole witness. Who can clarify exactly what happened aboard the SS Grouse on the 31st of October. Well, it would appear that it's too soon to move to adjudication at this point. The prosecution concurs. The court must hear Mr. Jigoku's testimony. No judgment should be passed until all testimony has been considered. In that case, I hereby call the end of today's proceedings. Court will reconvene at the same hour tomorrow. No objections from either side. No, my lord. No objections, my lord. You see, this is one thing that's a little unrealistic, that Kazuma admitted to being on the ship and with Gregson, and he's still allowed to be prosecutor of this case. That this this case would have been um, dismissed. They probably would have gotten a new prosecutor. Um, uh, this 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 would not happen like this. Um, we live to fight another day by the skin of our teeth. To be continued. I think that on the next part, we're going to have the ending, guys. I think the next part will be the ending. That's what I think. Because this is the final case. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. That was just crazy with the room. I knew that something was off there where the ice didn't melt. And then also the refrigeration. I was right that the ship um, that the ship would have a refrigerated um, uh, section on it. Um, and also, um, I thought I thought originally at the, at the numbers, I thought that it was gonna go like because because when you look at a phone, for instance, like you know numbers, um, uh, they're also like letters. So you know you have A B C for like one and stuff like that. And so I thought that it was gonna be like S was gonna be like the whatever number that would be in the alphabet. It would be like one two three four five until you get to the part of S, and that's how you would put the code in. But it turns out the Sholmes thing was just upside down. So that was just crazy. You had to go like this and just <laughs> oh my god, that was just oh man. That was um uh that that was that was that was an interesting though trick there. That was um the developer playing with our mind there. I wonder what what would happen if you made a mistake there because you weren't able to save at that point. So um thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. On the next part, we'll finally get to the truth. We're gonna find out who the serial killer was ten years ago probably, and we're gonna find out exactly what happened to Gregson. I don't f think Bear Zeke's is involved in this whatsoever, and I and I I think that Jigoku. I think he might be the serial killer from ten years ago. That's what I'm starting to think. I think that's why he might be targeted by the Reaper. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.